just briefly for people who don't know what insulin resistance is. To our best understanding, I think in the current sort of uh, paradigm is a condition where we see extra fat um, deposit into specific tissues and cause dysfunction within those tissues. And um, this fat becomes toxic to sort of the local organ environment. Um, we also know that um, that visceral fat, so fat around the belly and around the abdominal organs, is uh, <clears throat> has a change in its hormonal profile that causes and promotes insulin resistance as well through uh, changes in inflammation. So it increases inflammatory levels in the body that, that promote insulin resistance. Um, it decreases naturally, fat naturally secretes a hormone called adiponectin, in which is an insulin sensitizing hormone. And when you have obesity, a lot of people with obesity, their fat cells don't work normally, which is a hallmark of obesity. So they secrete all this nasty inflammatory product and they don't secrete the normal hormones that they're supposed to that help regulate the local metabolism and of, of the organ and, and the local tissues. And so it creates this environment between the fat that is infiltrating the organ specifically and the local environment that is created by the fat cells creates this pro-inflammatory insulin resistant environment. And that's, what, that's what's commonly seen in people who have obesity and it's one of the hallmarks we often see in patients with obesity. Um, so what does that mean specifically insulin resistance? Well, it's kind of a vague term. It's kind of a term that's misused by a lot of people. And the reason I say that is when you look at the clinical research, insulin resistance can mean something different in different organ tissues. So um, it's different in what in the muscle versus the liver versus the pancreas. And so um, it's there's what we call in sort of uh, academia and like in research is like tissue specific insulin resistance versus sort of systemic. But often people use it as a catch all phrase for people for basically the really crude explanation is is like a catch all term for people who don't respond to their normal insulin levels correctly. And so what the body does in response is it has to secrete more insulin. The, the pancreas has to secrete more insulin in response because the normal amount of insulin is not working correctly. So what you get is this cycle of increased levels of insulin in the body and insulin over long periods of times wreaks, wreaks habit at really high levels. It drives more inflammation. It causes more metabolic dysregulation. It causes water and salt retention. It causes high blood pressure, fat storage, a bunch of downstream things. So high, high insulin or hyperinsulinemia um, co often co-occurs. The sequence of that it, it is complicated and it's still being worked out. Uh, but I would tell you generally and what people refer to is the process by which extra fat gets deposited in organs. The organ tissue... Uh, becomes dysfunctional and it no longer responds to insulin like it used to. And, and so the body in response has to secrete more insulin in the body to deal with the same carbohydrate load because insulin is secreted in response to carbohydrates um, and protein, but primarily carbohydrates. That is just like a very, very simplified explanation, just so you know. There's a lot more that goes into it about glucose transporters and and sort of the the molecular uh, uh, issues that go on. So that may or may not be adequate in response. It's very complicated stuff. And the science of insulin resistance is still being worked out in terms of what drives what, what's the sequence of events, but based on our best knowledge, fatty, fatty deposition um, into organ systems causes dysfunction, um, a, an a intolerance to the glucose being deposited, uh, the, the necessary increase in insulin for those uh, cells to take up more glucose. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of it, very oversimplified. I, I'm sure there's some PhD scientists somewhere just you know shaking his head. Um, um, how do you combat insulin resistance? Uh, combating insulin resistance, I think the best data that we have um, is managing your weight in terms of insulin resistance. So if you can lose weight, then those tissues that have become insulin resistant, the muscle, the, the liver, um, the pancreas, they will start responding better and you'll respond to glucose better and carbohydrates better. 
And what has been shown, I think, from a consensus standpoint, is that lower glycemic carbohydrates, so things that have higher fiber content, lower sugar content, um, are better. Cutting out sugar is key. Cutting out the refined grains, so like flour-based grains, so things I always tell people to make it really simple, white carbs, you know, um, oftentimes some people need to cut out potatoes even though they're not so bad, uh, but things like pasta, right, all the things we love, even just cutting down on those can be helpful. Um, focusing on protein as a key source, uh, a key nutrient source is huge. Protein has unique metabolic effects um, and it can promote better insulin function in the body. Um, and, and so that's helpful. It also helps keep you full. Probably the most satiating nutrient means some of it. You're feeling full pretty quickly and you're not feeling like you have to eat a whole lot more. Um, so one strategy you can use is as you're creating your meals, you know, the, the, the slow carbs, complex carbohydrates, low glycemic index carbohydrates, low glycemic low carbs, it's all the same stuff. It just means it doesn't have a high sugar content. Your body doesn't get this rapid sugar bolus, meaning you don't just get this huge influx of sugar that you can't handle because you're insulin resistant, um, but you're getting a slow and steady stream of carbs. Um, that your body can handle, and you're also eating protein, so your body's responding more favorably because protein augments the way the insulin functions. Um, so you're doing all those things, um, and it's the combination of those things are helping you also control your appetite, which is helping you cut down on your total amount of food. So I really focus on patients with insulin resistance. High protein, that's typically lean, meaning it's not coming with a lot of fat. So if you like to eat animal-based protein, focusing on lean cuts of that, I usually like 10% or less of fat. Plant-based protein as well is great. Um, so like legumes, lentils, there's a bunch of like different uh, uh, legume-based pasta that you can get that's really fun. They even have legume-based rice, which is better than wheat and, and a lot of the other stuff that the rice is made from. Um, so, because... Uh, Legumes have a ton of fiber and protein. So it's it's a superior source of, uh, of pasta and rice if that's something of interest to you. If you still like eating those food, I would definitely encourage you to check them out. There's a million different types you can order on Amazon and some of these different online stores. Um, you know, soy, tofu, there's a bunch of plant-based protein that's good. Um, I'm not even that opposed to some of these alternative meat products. They're okay too. Um, if you're having, you know, one or two servings a week, that's a very reasonable thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, the combination of those low glycemic carbs, high protein, usually I shoot around 30% of your calories for the day coming from protein, or if it's easier to think about it as like one gram of protein per pound of, of ideal body weight. For most uh, men and women, that's going to be anywhere from 80 grams all the way up to like 160 um, in terms of the grams of protein a day. So that, that, that's kind of my approach dietary that will help you control your appetite, will help you get your insulin working better in your body, will help your body process glucose better, and eventually will also help you lose weight. And losing the weight is the key to controlling the insulin resistance. So uh, that's, that's what I would do from a diet standpoint. Um, physical activity and resistance training that allows you to build up your muscle function, your muscle mass, and the muscle, the, the metabolic muscle activity. So it helps increase mitochondrial density, which are like, these are like the powerhouses of the cell. They create all the energy. It improves the mitochondrial function just by doing resistance training and, and, and cardio. Doing that also we know helps combat and reverse insulin resistance at the level of the muscle. So the combination of being physically active in various ways, um, focusing on that kind of dietary approach, which I think is, very helpful in terms of what the science supports um, is a really good place to start. For some people, they need to lose a higher amount of weight or, or have bigger aspirations to lose even more weight than beyond than what their diet and exercise can do. Um, then oftentimes we talk about medicine or surgery also helping um, depending upon what their health risks and how much weight they need to lose and how aggressive they want to be about managing it. Um, so there are a bunch of different ways. The more that you can utilize these different strategies, the better off you'll be. Um, certainly the ones, the diet and exercise component are, are huge uh, because we know insulin resistance can be real with, with just lifestyle changes alone. There's a lot of data, 20 plus years worth of data on that.